The Night Beat starts right now. A man allegedly armed with knives locks himself inside of a home with his kids. It started five hours ago, and it's still happening now. It's a troubling trend in our city. Pedestrians and bicyclists getting killed on the road, while a local biking group says more needs to be done. But first... Tonight, a community at a standstill. People have been stuck in their homes, unable to leave for hours after a father of two accused of assaulting his mother barricaded himself inside of a home with his children. This is happening in the Westwood Village community. That's where our Patty Santos joins us live. Patty, first, we want to ask about these kids. I understand you saw police actually with one of them tonight. Yeah, one of those kids was able to get out, but the problem is there's still another child inside. It has been a very anxious filled night as family are awaiting news outside uh, the yellow tape here. We're all looking down the street here. Uh, it's a little dark to see, but we're waiting for news. We're hearing negotiators talk and plea with this person to please let this nine month old out safely. Now take a look. This was the moment we thought the standoff would end. One child, a one year old, safely walked out of that house. We watched as he was taken out by family out of this scene, but his little brother is still inside. Now the suspect's sister is helping police try to get that suspect to surrender the baby. Take a listen. Our biggest concern is to end this peacefully. Uh, we want a peaceful resolution. We want that baby to be safe as well as uh, everybody involved. We want people to be able to get back in their homes, but at this time, given the situation, if you can't go somewhere else, um, go with other family members. And that's police asking neighbors to be patient. They're going to not really rush this. This They're just going to wait for all of this to end pe uh, peacefully. The, the man is armed with two knives, they say, and they want to make sure that no one is hurt tonight. Back live out here. We know that police were initially called to this scene for a, an assault in progress. We're told the 19-year-old was assaulting his mother. That mother, uh, we're told, is doing okay. No serious injuries. But again, we're going to continue to stay here and bring you more as we get more information and hopefully have some good news to report. We'll send it back to you. Yeah, let's hope that whole thing ends peacefully. Thank you, Patty. Well, he's accused of killing a teenager in a hit and run crash. We're talking about 46 year old Greg Gonzalez. He was arrested today, charged with failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. These charges actually stem from this, a crash that happened around 1030 on Sunday night on Calabar Road not far from St. Mary's University. That's where police say 16 year old Draven Espinosa was just crossing the street when he was hit by a suburban driven by Gonzalez. We spoke with family and friends of the victim and while they are happy an arrest has been made, they believe there are more people who should have been held accountable. It shouldn't only be him getting incarcerated. It should be everybody else that was in that vehicle because they knew that they hit somebody, but it wasn't just a somebody. It was a kid. He just turned 16. He just had his birthday. Now you've taken his life away. Not only the driver, but the other people in the vehicle. You should have stopped and said something. Family and friends of the victim holding a plate sale this weekend to raise money for funeral costs. We have that information posted for you right now on KSAT.com. And sadly, that's just one of the latest accidents involving pedestrians and cyclists. Yeah, we're seeing it way too often. The 19th John Paul Baraja spoke with the cycling advocates, with some cycling advocates, about the string of recent hit and run cases in San Antonio. When hitting the streets on a bike, safety is a priority. But at times, cyclists are at the will of those behind the wheel of a vehicle. Activate SA Executive Director Joey Pavlik tells us the streets seem to be getting more dangerous. People are getting seriously injured or killed. And those are people that we know in our community, uh, you know, friends, family and more. In the last 22 days, there have been at least six hit and runs in our area, five of them deadly and the lone survivors in critical condition. All victims were either on a bike or walking. Please stop and help uh, these individuals who were hit, cyclists, pedestrian, because uh, I could, you know, depend on them surviving or not. Pavlik says biking is a way of life for many and the best option of transportation for some. He adds even when taking extra precautions, there isn't much cyclists can do. Those calls with drivers, um, I've had instances where I've, you know, biked out of the way. People would, you know, maybe run up behind me and maybe try to taunt me or scare me. He tells us with more people moving to San Antonio and more people on the road, he'd like to see more protection for bikers. Incredibly proud of the city for, you know, making the efforts and building out 100 plus miles of greenway trails, but 
that's like the wheel and we need some spokes in between to connect. If we make roadways safer for cyclists and pedestrians, we'll make it safer for drivers too. John Paul Barajas, KSET 12 News. In other news, after decades of strict requirements, more gay and bisexual men can donate blood. Before gay and bisexual men had to abstain for, from sex for at least three months before they could donate. This stems from the HIV AIDS epidemic in the 80s, but the Food and Drug Administration just got rid of that rule. Now it's asking all donors about their sexual history. Audra Taylor with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center hopes that those changes get more people to roll up their sleeves. The same questions will be asked to all donors, uh, regardless of gender or sexual affiliation. So it's more of an individual risk more than a targeted risk at a certain group of, of potential donors. So the next time you go to donate, you might notice that the questionnaire sheet is going to be different and those new sheets are going to start rolling out this fall. Cities across the United States, a number of them anyway, are asking the federal government for help as Governor Greg Abbott continues sending buses of asylum seekers from Texas north. Hotels in New York City filled with families with the mayor saying nearly 50% of all hotel rooms are now being used as shelters. They're taking in more than 600 asylum seekers a day, double the amount since Title 42 ended. On Thursday, Denver, Colorado became the fifth city to also receive buses from Texas. The mayors of at least four cities, including the two mentioned, sent a letter to President Biden asking for help. Tonight, there's a new memorial for the 10 people killed at a Texas high school in 2018. The 12 foot tall bronze statue called Warrior Spirit now stands in front of Santa Fe High School. That's where 13 others were also injured in the May 2018 attack. The same sculptor who designed the Texas A&M Bonfire Memorial made this one. We're watching the radar closely this evening for thunderstorms so far still well to the north of San Antonio and pretty much the whole case at 12 viewing area. We're talking up in Gillespie County near Fredericksburg and especially east of Fredericksburg where we have one severe storm. But on the bottom of the screen there, San Antonio, nothing. And I don't think we have anything to worry about for a few more hours. That's when our storm chances jump up by midnight at 30%, 1 a.m. We're up to 40%. So that's an indication that not everybody's going to get hit. It's going to be scattered in nature or widely separated. I'll be back to talk more about it and, of course, more rain chances into the weekend in just a bit. Adam, thank you. And here are some of today's headlines in your night beat news flash as House Democrats and Republicans tried to reach a deal on the debt ceiling. The House Speaker hit pause. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy suspended negotiations to settle other issues that are blocking both sides from reaching a middle ground. Now, the thing is, it's unclear when those talks are going to continue. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that leaders have until June 1st to reach a deal. She says because if they don't by that date, the U.S. could run out of money to pay its bills. TikTok creators are suing the state of Montana for banning the app. They claim that the law violates the First Amendment. But the governor there says that he did it to protect people's private data from TikTok's Chinese parent company. Montana's ban says that it stops TikTok from operating in the state and blocks downloads of the app, but it's not going to penalize people who use it. The ban is set to take effect next January, and so far, 33 states around the country have taken steps to restrict TikTok. NFL legend and social activist Jim Brown has died. A spokesperson for his family says that he passed away peacefully at his Los Angeles home yesterday. During his playing career, he shattered records. He also dedicated much of his life to social causes. Jim Brown was 87 years old. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Do you have any of these? Why a major retailer is recalling a bunch of candles? It's a dangerous reason. And a judge says he's too dangerous to be released from jail ahead of his trial. Why this case could be a plot from a spy novel. An unimaginable tragedy. The lives of 19 students and two teachers lost. Look at us. Our lives have been turned upside down. After 12 months, actions to prevent school shootings in Texas have stalled. For our kids, not enough for you to make some kind of change. And the once strong community of Uvalde is beginning to fracture. Wednesday at 9, the search for answers in a community struggling to heal. One year in Uvalde. Wednesday at 9 p.m. on KSAT 12. General Motors recalling more than 660,000 SUVs because of a potential safety issue involving child car seats. SUVs recalled 
the recall is for the two. 2020 to 2023 Chevy Equinox and GMC terrain vehicles. Officials say the rear seat latch bars used to secure car seats may have extra powder coating that would prevent them from being secured. Owners are advised to use the car's rear seat belts to install car seats until the anchor bars are fixed. Dealers will inspect and make free repairs. GM will send notices to owners next month. Target recalling nearly 5 million candles that could cut people when broken. They come in a glass jar. They carry the brand name Threshold. So far, Target has received more than 100 reports saying they easily break or crack open while they're lit. This has led to at least six injuries causing cuts or severe burns. If you have any of these candles, return them for a refund. The man accused of leaking classified Pentagon documents will remain in federal custody ahead of his trial. Air National Guardsman Jack Tixera appeared in court. His family hoped that a judge would grant him pretrial release. They didn't, though. ABC's Tim Pulliam has the story. No bail. Jax Texera, the Air National Guardsman, charged with leaking America's defense secrets, leaving court and headed back to jail. During his court appearance Friday, a judge agreeing with federal prosecutors that he's a flight risk. And if released, the young man could be swayed to release sensitive information to the nation's enemies. The judge said the list of people Jax Texera put at risk was as long as a phone book. He goes on to say, I understand it smacks of a spy novel, adding foreign countries know this defendant was disloyal to the United States. The judge cited these three letters issued by Texera's superiors, warning him about accessing classified information. The Air Force is conducting its own investigation into why he was allowed to keep his security clearance. The judge also expressing concern over Texera's fascination with guns. Prosecutors refer to this video where he is seen at a gun range shooting at a target after spewing racial and ethnic slurs. In the 21-year-old's defense, his lawyers tried to portray a different side of Texera, like the one of him reading the Bible before he surrendered to the FBI last month without incident. Texera's family leaving court, sharing their disappointment with the judge's decision, writing, Jack's well-being and safety is our priority right now. As a family, we are committed as ever and remain steadfast and determined in our complete support of Jack as we continue to wade through this process. Jack Texera has been charged with unauthorized retention and transmission of national defense information and willful retention of classified documents. He could face a maximum of 15 years in prison. He has not entered a plea. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. Now back here home, live cam here. All right, looks. Oh, did you just see that? Yeah. Lightning and Lightning there. off in the distance. Yeah, 80 degrees right now. And uh, you've been talking about this all day, Adam, about the storm chances. And it's not everybody's going to get. No, not everybody. And I repositioned that live cam so we could see some of those flashes off in the distance because those thunderstorms that are up near Fredericksburg, they're, you know, 40 to 50,000 feet tall. And so you can see them from here. You'll see those flashes of light when you look off to the north. Let's take a look at our storm chances here going forward. And midnight, 30% by 1, 2 a.m., we're up to 40%. About 40 to 50% of South Central Texas is likely to get hit by a thunderstorm later on tonight in the overnight hours. And where they do happen to hit, there is the chance of something to become strong to severe with uh, straight line winds and hail being the primary risks. But let's take a look at it. Nothing around San Antonio right now. We go off to the north. Gillespie County, few thunderstorms, one severe storm that's headed eastward toward Johnson City right now. It's just severe there in eastern Gillespie County, but it has show, has been showing signs of weakening uh, pretty significantly here over the past 20 minutes or so. Nonetheless, just some lightning and thunder behind that there north of Fredericksburg. But this is all that we have even close to San Antonio right now. Previously, this had a pretty uh, notable hail core, but it looks like that is starting to weaken a little bit. So that's some good news for some folks east of Fredericksburg. Also, just west of Eagle Pass in Mexico, some thunderstorm development here. We often uh, look to Mexico in this type of weather pattern for that development that then drifts eastward or then develops more and strengthens as it moves east across the Rio Grande. So we'll watch that. There's the potential for that development eastward. And if we see that through midnight, then it's even more likely to make its way into San Antonio later on tonight. But around town right now, Nothing, nothing to worry about at the moment, but you may be woken up later on tonight from some of those showers and storms. Look at the last six hours, San Angelo to Waco up to Dallas. This is where all the action has been. 
and even some severe thunderstorms mixed in there. We actually have a cool front that's drifting southward, but it's also combining with this upper level energy that's just being funneled right in off the Pacific. So up above us, we've got this Pacific moisture and energy moving overhead. And I think this energy is especially going to help us out on Sunday morning to kickstart some showers, just regular showers Sunday morning. Nothing strong or severe expected at that point. But tonight, this is combining with this weak little cold front that's pushing our way and behind it. I mean, noticeably cooler temperatures, 59 Oklahoma City, Wichita 51, uh, Guymon, Oklahoma 56. But we're not going to see that kind of impact in terms of cooler temperatures once this makes it here by uh, really just a matter of hours that cold front's going to make it here. Here's our future cast. Take this with the grain of salt because they're having a hard, these models are having a hard time really uh, getting a grasp on the situation that's going on. But what I want to point out here is there is the potential for some storms to come together in a more organized complex anywhere from Del Rio to Austin tonight. It could be San Antonio, could be closer to the border, could be a little further east of town. It's just a matter of exactly where they start to develop and come together and a lot of factors unforeseeable factors can influence that. Even some outflow boundaries coming south from San Angelo right now could be impacting that. So that's something we'll be watching. But again, about 40 to 50 percent of South Central Texas being affected. Should we see any severe storms, hail one inch in diameter or wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour pose the primary threats overnight tonight? And I think as we get later into the night and especially closer to sunrise tomorrow, those severe threats really start to fall off. So tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. We still have that 40% chance, and I think mostly that would be some leftover showers that then quickly taper off. And by noon, we're down to 10% by 5 p.m. A 20% chance of a shower a little bit cooler this weekend. 81 the high tomorrow. So that's 83 in Castroville, 79 in Bulverde, Bernie at 79 degrees. And then we get into Sunday and remember I talked about that upper level energy. I think that could kickstart some of those morning showers on Sunday. So church Sunday morning, expect some scattered or widely separated showers across our area. A little bit of dampness from here to there, but nothing really problematic and 78 degrees. So a little bit cooler there on Sunday. Now next week it's back to sunshine and really cross your fingers for rain tonight and into Sunday because Looks like we're going to dry out a little bit next week with a lot of sunshine, so we'll need to accumulate all that we can while it's available. Take whatever we can get. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. You know, you go out to some high school baseball games. You never know <laughs> who you might run into, Andrew. Yeah, that's right. We've actually got a famous celebrity on hand at NEISD Sports Park, and he's a Bernie Champion fan. We come back. We're talking about Goldberg at NEISD Sports Park. We'll get some highlights from a great game two between Champion and Smithson Valley, plus East Central softball forces a game three against the defending champs. Got that too next. School baseball playoffs continued tonight with Class 5A third round action at NAISD Sports Park. Smithson Valley taking on Bernie Champion. The Chargers took game one last night 4-1, to one, so the Rangers are facing elimination. And how about wrestling legend Bill Goldberg taking in the game in the stands? He's cheering for champion. Chargers take control of this one in the top of the first. Quinn Grable gets one to drop in shallow center. Cam Logan scores part of a five-run inning, and the Chargers are loving it. They go up 5 to nothing. But the Rangers aren't out of it yet. Bottom of the second now, Jackson Elizondo smokes one deep to left, and you can kiss that ball goodbye. A solo shot makes it a 5-2 game, but Champion takes this one 7-4. They advance to the regional semis with a two-game sweep. In Class 6A, O'Connor starting their third-round series on the road against Eagle Pass. Top of the fourth, Panthers down 3-0. Charles Dominguez slices one into center. It tails off from the fielders and drops in. One run scores. O'Connor sends the second as the throw comes home here, and he's going to slide in safe. O'Connor pulls within a run down three to two, but Eagle Pass responds. Bottom of the sixth, Obi Martinez drives in an insurance run with an RBI single to right, and the Eagles take game one, four to two. Game two is tomorrow afternoon. Meanwhile, the defending Class 6A state champion O'Connor softball team has a chance to punch their tickets to this year's regional final, taking on East Central in game two of their series. Hornets strike first in the top of the first. Isabella Valdez sends one deep to right, and gone. A two-run blast opens the scoring as the Hornets lead 2-0. 
Then top of the second, how about another? Isabella Vidal crushes a solo shot to left. Great day to be named Isabella. Hornets stay alive with a 7-0 victory. Both teams are back at it tomorrow for the decisive game three at noon. We've got a one-game playoff in the Class 5A Regional Semifinals. Undefeated Canyon taking on Flower Bluff. Game tied at one in the bottom of the third. Two on. D.D. Baldwin says, see you later. That is a three-run blast to left center. The Cougarettes score seven unanswered runs in return to the regional final with an 8-1 victory. TLU softball entered this evening with their backs against the wall. One loss, and they'd be heading home for the regional tournament. Instead, they crushed State University of New York 9-0 and carried that momentum into their second game against the host team, East Texas Baptist. Top of the first, Serena Gonzalez drove in the first run of the game with an RBI single to left. Then Bailey Hudgens doubled the lead with a single of her own into shallow right. Bulldogs jumped out to a 4-0 lead and they hang on to win it 4-3. Next up, a rematch against Bellhaven in the championship game tomorrow. They need to beat Bellhaven twice to advance. Trinity Baseball kicked off their regional tournament this afternoon against Pacific University. Tigers blew an 8-0 lead in this game, and we're in extras with the game tied at 9-all. Bases loaded, Christian Holloway sends one deep to left field and gone for a go-ahead grand slam. He was 0-5 before that hit. Trinity wins it 13-10. They will take on the host East Texas Baptist tomorrow at 2.30. After last night's offensive fireworks, UTSA Baseball takes on Louisiana Tech in game two of their three-game series. Top of the fifth, game tied at two with two on. Matt King drives a base hit right up the middle. That'll play both runners on base as UTSA takes a 4-2 lead, and they go on to win at 5-3. They will conclude their regular season tomorrow afternoon. Let's head to the majors. Rangers starting a home series against the Rockies. Bottom fourth, Adelise Garcia. By Felicia. That's a two-run shot to right. Texas never looks back. They rack up 10 hits and win it 7-2. San Antonio FC about to wrap up their road trip. Next. San Antonio FC is right back in the thick of the USL's Western Conference leaders with 19 points. That's good enough for third overall. The Alamo City Club has scored nine goals in their last two matches, and Tani Oluwasei has been at the heart of it all, scoring four in that span. He's as surprised as anyone that scoring has come so easily, but he's also quick to credit SAFC's style of play. I know that if I'm in these positions to score goals, I'm always going to get a goal. So the way we play and our style of play always it increases my chances of being in these positions of scoring. So I think that's what I'm going to truly like relate it to, like the balls that we play in behind. It's kind of playing to my strengths. So because it's playing to my strengths, it's a lot easier for me to to grab goals. San Antonio FC will wrap up their road trip against Detroit City FC tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Detroit is currently at the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings. The Miami Heat have done it again. Jimmy Butler scored a team-high 27 points as the Heat outscored Boston 36-22 in the fourth quarter of Game 2 to win 111-105 and take a 2-0 series lead back to Miami. So the road team in the East is up 2-0, and the home team in the West is up 2-0 as well. Shocker. Definitely. I, I, I can't imagine the mood of Boston fans right now. I Actually, I can, <laughs> but nothing I can repeat on TV. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Thank you, Andrew. We'll just leave it there. We'll be right back. <laughs> we're starting to see some new development here between Fredericksburg and Kerrville, and this is the trend we were looking for in terms of development southwestward into the Hill Country. So we'll keep an eye on that and uh, stay here. We'll be live on the KSAT Weather Authority app and even KSAT.com and, of course, on air if anything uh, turns severe. But we'll be watching that for you as that could fill in, turn into a more organized system and head our way. That would be closer to midnight tonight and even a little bit thereafter. Then Sunday morning, we're looking at some scattered areas of just rain. Have a great weekend.